the main character I'm playing is Herb Barnes. He's um, Amber's dad. Um, and he's, he's there really to make... He, he makes Amber's life difficult. You know, he's, um, he's, a, he's a big obstacle for the family. Um, but that, 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 that's his function really. And, but he has his own um, issues which he's, he's dealing with and an addiction which, you know, has, is really kind of taken over him. So it, it pollutes his, his um, the way he uh, interacts with the family, the way he sees life, it, 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 it has a real adverse effect. So he's, he, he's uh, the dad, I play Jazz as well, who's um, Ruby's husband. And he's, I mean, it says in the script, you know, he's, he's a quiet man, a gentle man and a kind man, and that's what he is, you know, he, he's there really trying to make things work between himself and um, Ruby, you know, because he's finding that you know, the relationship isn't where it should be. Um, but he's also there to remind us that, you know, there are nice, there are nice people in the world, you know, um, and things don't necessarily go according to plan for them either. Uh, but yeah, he's, he's there to, you know, who, and he, he's, he's part of his family, you know, and he's witnessing a lot of this, but he's kind of on the outskirts and he's not really able to really have much weight in, um, you know, or any say. Um, but a lot of that stems from not being able to communicate properly with um, uh, Ruby. Um, or she has a lack of interest in in, uh, in in jazz. And the final character I play is um, Mr. Jones, who's um, the, the inspiring teacher that plants that seed in, in, in um, Amber's mind about, you know, taking action, you know, maybe exploring this idea of, of a revolution and um, really, you know, to make a change for the better. Um, so, yeah. And, and he's there the, as a catalyst that, that, that gets things, um, um, yeah, moving in the right direction for Amber and, 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 and the family for, for of Amber's mom and sister. You think about the physicality for each character, you think about, yeah, there is a voice quality, you know, for example, her bonds is quite harsh and hard and, you know, um, he dictates a lot. Um, you know, demands a lot, instructs a lot, and that that then is presented, you know, in that harsh kind of um, edgy um, language and abruptness he has. Jas, you know, he's a he's a friendly guy, you know, um, and so you know he, he he has a softer tone. You know, he's more open to you know just sharing other people's um, happiness. Um, so uh again you know so that reflect you know that just keeping that in mind you kind of you know you you just have that that lightness about you but he's quite grounded as well so you know there's a yeah it, a, him being rooted just there's there's that aspect you know um Harbans is a bit you know um just all over the place you know the, he, he really owns the space you know he'd like i say because of that control um, and Mr. Jones, you know, he's he's a, he's a bouncy character. He's um, an inspiring character. He wants to, you know, educate um, children in an entertaining way. So, you know, keeping that in mind, you, it kind of informs how you move um, with that lightness he has. But you know, the other thing that I find helps to help, you know, remind myself as an actor, you know, about uh, the, these individual characters is. Um, it's, it's, I mean, you know, without getting too deep, but there's a, there's a, you know, there's a, there's a, um, something called um, the, the Chekhov technique, and it's, it's called psychological gesture, and it's just something, a gesture you can express physically that, 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 that sums up that character's, you know, feelings and emotions. But it's, 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 it's creating that gesture physically, and it can be in any kind of form, but something that sums you up, uh, sums up the character keeping that in mind and letting that physicality affect your emotions, but then you use that as an anchor once you, you know, you, you, and you kind of recall that anchor each time and you do that for each character. Um, and the gesture can be big or small, but anything that kind of sums up, like for example, you know, with Harbans, it's like, 
I kind of felt like he's contorted and he's got the weight of the world on him, but he's angry. And so it's just like him crouched, fisted, you know, and then it, it's what do those emotions bring? How does that make me feel? So I remember that when I come out of that gesture and I'm in scenes or just before I'm about to go on stage, just recall that. And, and, and I do that for each jazz and Mr. Mr. Jones. You know, jazz is like, he's an open ember, he's an open person, so he embraces, he's got like, that, that is, you know, he, he embraces people um, and he's open. Mr. Jones, you know, it's kind of quite, um, he's quite theatrical, he's a performer. So, and it could be as simple as something like this, you know, just doing this. But what does that make me feel as Mr. Jones? And I keep all those things in mind and um, then I'll go on stage to help make that distinction between each character and, and the lines, obviously, get that across as well. Um, actors don't usually tend to speak about their process or techniques a lot, you know, um, and, you know, you don't necessarily have to use it in every, you know, rehearsal process, but I find it really useful because some actors might want to use animals, you know, and kind of what animal a character might remind them of, and then, you know, they kind of, kind of spend time with that, observing that animal, being that animal, and then just n taking out those, you know, obvious characteristics of those animals, but letting, letting that affect. So it was one that was personal to me. My, um, Michael Chekhov, you know, he, 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 he's a, you know, a, a great practitioner in, you know, in, 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 um, in, you know, having techniques for acting. So that was one that resonated with me. Yeah, I mean, you know, there's this, it, it's this remembering where, you, you know, once you've come out of one character and you, you've, you've then become somebody else, but then you're going back to the other one that you've just, you know, you were in two scenes ago. It's trying to remember where, you know, where his where you left that character. So it's just trying to recall that. Um, there's the practical side of things. Remember what costume you're wearing and making sure, you know, you've got the right costume on. Um, uh, yeah, it's, it's. They're, they're the challenges, and you're literally thinking, please take a little bit longer saying those lines. It gives me that extra five seconds to make sure I've kind of got my hair up, got the zip up, um, and then, you know, you, it, and if, if, if some of the costume changes go a little bit awry, it's panic mode, but then you just compose yourself just before you step on stage. But those, those are the challenges, yeah, remembering where you are, uh, where you were in the previous scene, and then remember where you need to take the character. And the other thing is, um, and, and the costume changes, but the other thing is, um, because the scenes are so quick and so short with each character, it's making sure, uh, you know, the, the pressure of making sure you hit the emotional levels and continue help telling the story. So jumping into those uh, moments um, to get those emotional, um, you know, uh, get that emotional clarity across it, it is challenging. But yeah, it, you just do it. Um, but that's the other challenge I found with playing, having multiple characters. You can't just keep track of one character and remember their journey. It is just dropping it and then picking up, but then doing it very quickly and making sure you do it in the few lines or the one or two pages you have on, on stage. Yeah, I mean, you know, Harbans, he's, he, he's, a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a scarred character, you know, he's, he's had a difficult upbringing. He's, he's an orphan, he was made an orphan, uh, you know, it, it's not, um, it's not specific in, in, in the story of our, in our play for the theatre, but, but, but he does make reference to it at the end, that, you know, he was in an orphanage, orphanage so that, that experience has scarred him, and then he's, you know, he was, so he lost his parents, he, he was encouraged to come to England with all these promises, those promises weren't met, but, you know, you know, he's uneducated, he can't read or he can't write, you know, he's, he's trying to support a family, he got married young, and so he's trying to keep things together, but he's not delivering as, um, you know, uh, a husband, as a dad, and he knows this, and, he's, and, he, and, he, and, he's, and he has massive insecurities about, you know, his um, lack of education and having to rely on his daughters, but all the early problems, you know, his, 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 his answer was, you know, alcohol. It, he felt that numbs, you know, whatever it is he's feeling, and it, and it does for him. But the effects, you know, they're just devastating for him, for his family, his loved ones, and it just gets worse and worse, you know, as life continues for him. Um, so he's that way because he's addicted, and now he's addicted to alcohol, you know, there's nothing... Um, he needs help. 
and as I say, you know, it, it, it's that addiction that pollutes his interaction with his family and he's completely oblivious to people that actually love and care for him. And he hurt so many people in the process. And then at the end, you know, he kind of... The thing is, they do, he does feel guilt, but only in moments of when he's sober. But then the, the addiction beckons him and then he's, he's back in that mindset. But yeah, at the end, you know, I guess I like to think, you know, he, he, with the realisation of, you know, how he feels um, being isolated, that he might take a step forward, you know, to kind of put things right. But the addiction's massive for him and that's what causes everything to, to go wrong. Well, it's the only chair we have on stage, so <laughs> he's not got much option. But it, it does feel like his... Um, he stashes his alcohol down there, he broods there, you know, he thinks there, he gets, he sleeps there, you know, yeah, I mean, you know, it's, 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 it's it is him, isn't it? Um, okay. I guess it's one place he kind of feels comfortable, you know, because he does, because he has moments where he, you know, he thinks about, I guess, comforting thoughts of his mum. So, yeah, you know, I'm sure it has some sort of comforting effect, but then... It's a chair that kind of, you know, he does a lot of thinking on, but kind of takes him down a downward spiral when he gets too deep in thinking, which he's constantly doing. Yes, yeah, so individually, I mean, we all do actually collectively, you know, we watch, um, uh, I say watch, um, we do vocal warm up, we do um, exercises, you know, physical activities, physical warm ups, uh, making sure, you know, we're all um, kind of, you know, just feeling ready for the show because you know if the body's not warmed up one little mishap you know and then you're going to be paying for it down the line and then you can't do a certain lift or anything properly so we do make sure we're physically warmed up vocally warmed up um and we practice all the um the the, the, the physical moves and um lifts and things on stage that happen in this show always as a prep uh, practice the races because there's a lot of timing of uh, movements which you know all are to counts and beats so we do that every night. Um, individually, you know, I, you know, I, you kind of, I, I dipped into things um, that I felt informed my character, you know, about alcoholism, about, you know, um, the addiction, um, you know. So, yeah, so there's, there's things that I did during the rehearsal, but otherwise that's always a given vocal warm-ups and... Um, physical warm-ups.